The planet Venus is frequently referred to as Earth's twin. The size, density, and gravity of both planets are nearly identical. Despite having comparable physical characteristics like most siblings we know, the two worlds turned out to be vastly different. Venus is a scorching hellscape, whereas Earth is a paradise for life. Venus has a thick, poisonous atmosphere packed with carbon dioxide, and it is the hottest planet in the entire solar system, with a temperature of 850 degrees Fahrenheit. It has a crushing atmosphere and is always enveloped in thick, yellowish sulfuric acid clouds. Even though Venus was the first planet ever visited by a Russian spacecraft, space agencies have mostly neglected Venus in recent decades, focusing instead on other planets, especially Mars. Everything is about to change now. Two missions have been approved by NASA's Solar System Exploration Program, and both are headed for Venus. Between 2028 and 2030, the two ambitious missions will commence. NASA's Planetary Research Branch hasn't dispatched a mission to the planet since 1990. Thus, this is a significant shift in direction. NASA is planning to return to Venus for the first time in more than three decades to learn more about the history of what scientists believe to be the solar system's first livable planet since Venus is very similar to Earth. On Earth, carbon is mostly confined to rocks. But in Venus, it has escaped into the atmosphere, resulting in a 96% carbon dioxide atmosphere. This has resulted in a greenhouse effect that has pushed surface temperatures as high as 890 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus was formerly thought to be a hot, temperate globe with seas, rivers, and streams, according to scientists. Recent examination reveals that Venus was habitable for billions of years until the greenhouse effect took root some 700 million years ago. According to another study, Venus might be livable right now. Microbes might be present high in the clouds, where the temperature is colder, and the pressure is equivalent to that of Earth's surface. The discovery of phosphine, a chemical generated by bacteria, showed that life might exist in Venus's clouds. However, other researchers have not corroborated the purported phosphine discovery, and it remains a source of heated disagreement. As a result, Venus has become a popular target for extraterrestrial search. Exoplanet researchers are attempting to comprehend the Venus-Earth distinction in order to learn more about how planets form in general, as well as how habitable circumstances change. NASA's Associate Administrator for Science, Thomas Serbukin, praised what he dubbed a decade of Venus to understand how an Earth-like planet may become a hothouse. He believes that studying the development of planets and their habitability in our own solar system, as well as expanding beyond these bounds to exoplanets, will be a fascinating and rapidly developing area of NASA's research. Because of the planet's history, it's an ideal location for studying the greenhouse effect and learning how to regulate it on Earth. We may use models to plot Venus's atmospheric extremes and compare them to what we see here on Earth. However, one of the reasons planetary exploratory missions have avoided Venus is because of its harsh surface conditions. The extreme temperatures result in a very high pressure of 90 bars, which is enough to instantaneously crush most planetary landers. It's hardly surprising, therefore, that expeditions to Venus haven't always gone according to plan. Between the 1960s and 1980s, the then Soviet Union carried out most of the exploration. The Venus mission was responsible for some of human space exploration's most significant achievements, including the first spacecraft that landed on another planet and the first photos shot from another planet's surface. Venera 1 was the first to launch, and it made a flyby in May 1961. However, owing to a communication failure, no data was received. Following that, 11 probes, including both the Vega program and Venera Halley probes, safely landed on Venus's surface, while 13 probes successfully entered the planet's atmosphere. Venera 13 lasted more than two hours under the tremendous heat and crushing pressure of Venus's surface, whereas others barely lasted a few minutes. The Soviet Union acquired the majority of Venus's atmospheric and surface data. In 1962, NASA's Mariner 2 successfully passed over the cloud-covered globe and surveyed it. Magellan, NASA's final Venus spacecraft, arrived in 1990 and used radar to scan the planet's surface. 
Since then, several spacecraft from the United States and other space organizations have passed by Venus on their way to other destinations. Galileo to Jupiter was launched in 1990. Cassini-Huygens to Saturn was launched in 1998-99, and NASA's Messenger mission to Mercury was launched in 2006 and 2007. Before we talk about NASA's mission to Venus, make sure you've liked this video, subscribed to Space Facts, and switched on notification options to never miss a video. Da Vinci Plus will be the name of the first two NASA missions chosen. It will be a shortening of Deep Atmosphere of Venus Investigations of Noble Gases, Chemistry, and Imaging. It has a decent probe, which basically means it will have plummeted through the atmosphere while taking measurements. The fall is divided into three stages, the first of which examines the whole atmosphere. We know that sulfuric acid is only found in cloud layers above 50 kilometers, and that the atmosphere is 97% carbon dioxide. Examining trace components, on the other hand, can indicate how the atmosphere got to this state. At lower altitudes, the second stage will focus on recording meteorological data like wind speed, temperature, and pressure. Taking high-resolution surface images is the final step. On Mars, this is a common occurrence, but it has always been tough on Venus. Because visible light is absorbed by the dense cloud layer, observation from Earth or orbit is not possible. Rovers are also unfeasible because of the harsh surface conditions. A balloon mission has been suggested as another option. We have low-resolution photographs of Venus's surface owing to NASA's Magellan mission, which, is used, which used radar to study the surface in 1990. During its descent, the Da Vinci probe will use infrared light to acquire surface photos. These images will aid scientists in their investigation of how the surface developed and will allow better planning for future expeditions. Veritas is the second expedition. This is going to be a more typical planetary expedition. The orbiter will be equipped with two sensors that will map the surface in addition to Da Vinci's extensive infrared studies. The first is a camera that can detect a wide variety of wavelengths. It can look through Venus's clouds to analyze the composition of the atmosphere and land. This task is difficult because the reflected light has a wide range of wavelengths according to the surface temperature. Veritas will compensate for these flaws by employing approaches like those used to examine extraterrestrial atmospheres. Water vapor will also be detected using the wavelength camera. The Venus Express mission discovered that hydrogen and oxygen are the major components exiting the Venusian atmosphere. There will be very little water, or it will be well beneath the surface. The second instrument is radar, which employs a method that is often employed on Earth observation satellites. Using radio pulses aimed at different angles in front of the spacecraft, a very big active radio receiver, vital for high-resolution photos, is simulated. The high-resolution radar photos will be used to generate a complete map of Venus's surface development, including any tectonic or volcanic activity.